Hey there students, my name is Nathan and I'm a Chegg tutor. Today we're going to be talking about process costing, specifically how to calculate cost per equivalent unit using the FIFO method. Now process costing is really tricky and so I'm going to do my best today to lay everything out in simplified terms. Now first off, in process costing, what is an equivalent unit? So in process costing, we're going to be focusing mainly on the work in process departments. So these are units that have not been completed yet. They're still being worked on. Now an equivalent unit is basically translating partially completed units into whole units. So again, in work in process, they're working on these units. They're not fully completed yet. But for purposes of accounting, you'd like to go ahead and translate partially completed units into whole units. So for example, if five units are currently being worked on in work in process, and they are only 60% complete, so again, partially completed units, only 60% have been completed. We would translate the five 60% partially completed units to three completed units. Now again, all I did there is I did five units times 60% and I got three completed units. So what they're doing is they're just translating the partially completed units into what they would be under completed units. So five 60% complete units are translated to three complete units. And that's called an equivalent unit, those three units. Now we'll get into how to calculate cost per equivalent unit. So the very first step is you're gonna identify all the physical units in the process. So you're gonna take your beginning work in process, add in units started during the period, and that's going to equal units completed plus ending work in process. So those are equivalent to each other. Beginning work in process plus units started is equal to units completed plus ending work in process. And the next step is to calculate the equivalent units. So since we're using FIFO, we're only focusing on what was completed during the period. That's it. We're just focusing on what did we complete during the period. So in respect to materials, find out what's your percentage of completion. In respect to conversion costs, which is labor and overhead, what was your percentage of completion? Now this will make a lot more sense in a second when we do a problem. But these are the steps that you should follow. Step three, what are your current period costs? Once again, we're focusing on what you did during the period. Because with FIFO, the first units go out first when you make a sale. So those first units are usually units that you had in a previous period. So for this method, you're only focusing on what did I complete during the period? Because you already know that the first units are gonna go out already. So you wanna figure out what did I complete during the period? On step three, these are the current period costs. Uh, those are usually given in the problem. And then step four, what is your cost per equivalent unit? Take your current period costs and divide by equivalent units. And that equals cost per equivalent unit. Now, once again, these four steps will make a lot more sense when we do a problem. So let's go ahead and take a look here. On the right side, uh, Intertrode Inc. is a manufacturer of basketballs. So let's assume that one basketball or one unit requires only leather as direct materials. There's also assembly line workers that work within a manufacturing facility. This facility requires overhead of rent, insurance, and utilities. So there's materials, labor, overhead. Now there are 200 units in beginning work in process and 400 units that were started during the month of April. There were 500 units that were completed and transferred out during that period of April. 100 units are remaining in inventory. 
of the 500 that were completed and transferred out, 275 came from beginning work in process, and 225 were started in the period. So again, that's just focusing on the units that were completed and transferred out, which completion means 100%. With respect to beginning inventory, direct materials are considered 100% complete and conversion costs are 40% complete. So what they're saying is that the units in beginning inventory, all the materials, so all the leather has already been thrown into the mix. So it's been 100% complete in regards to leather. So we know that 100% is complete in regards to leather and only 40% have been complete in regards to labor and overhead or what they call conversion costs. With respect to ending inventory, direct materials are considered 100% complete and conversion costs are 60% complete. So during April, Intertrode had $20,000 in direct materials costs and $17,500 in conversion. So here's the first problem. How many physical units do we need to account for? Well, if we look to the left here, we know that the formula is beginning work in process plus units started during the period equals units completed plus ending work in process. So we'll just plug it in here. Beginning work in process, there were 200 units, and I'll abbreviate this to BWIP for beginning work in process. plus units started during the period, which is 400 units started, equals, looks like we have 500 units that were completed and transferred out, plus 100 units and ending work in process. Just like that. So that's the number of units that we need to account for, which is basically 600. As you can see, both sides are equal to each other. Now the next question is, what are the equivalent units for materials and conversion costs? So we're going to go ahead and focus on the right side of the equation here to figure this out. So of the units that were completed and transferred out, it says right here, 100 units were in any inventory. So that's what's remaining there. But of the 500 that were completed, 275 came from beginning work in process and 225 were started during the period. So, completed and transferred out, we know that from beginning work in process, and we're going to go ahead and set this up where we have column headers here. So this will be direct materials and conversion costs here. So for beginning work in process, we know that 275 came from there. But of that 275, it says that with beginning inventory, 100% were complete. So this is the tricky part here. Since we're only focusing on what was done during the period, we're going to have to exclude everything that was done outside of the period. So in beginning work in process, if materials are already 100% complete when they first arrived in the period, what did you actually complete during the period if they're already 100% complete? The answer is zero. You did nothing during the period in regards to materials for beginning inventory. So since it's already 100% complete, during the period you did 0% in regards to direct materials. So of that 275 total units in beginning work and process that were completed and transferred out, in regards to direct materials for equivalent units, there's zero units here. Because again, you didn't complete any of them during the period. They were already 100% complete when they arrived. Now conversion costs, a little bit different. Uh, if they're already 
40% complete when they first arrived, that means that you completed 60% during the period. So of that 275, I'll go like this. I'll say 275 times 100% complete minus 40%. That's essentially what's going on here. You've already completed 40%, so the remaining is 60% that you completed during the period. So 275 times 60%. So 165 equivalent units were completed during April. And this is a very tricky concept a lot of students struggle with. Once again, just ask yourself, what did I complete during the period? If 40% was already complete when it arrived, then that means that I had to complete 60% during the period. Okay, next, we'll have units started and completed, because that's what's remaining there. And we said that 275 of the completed units came from beginning, 225 were started. So for 225, since these were started and completed during the period, you did all the work in the period and you completed it. So it's 100% through and through. 225 equivalent units, 225 equivalent units. Then you have ending work in process. And we said with respect to ending inventory, Direct materials are considered 100% complete and conversion costs are 60. Well, if that's what's left over, you can assume that all of that was completed during the period. So 100%, which again, we have 100 units left in any work in process, like we stated up here. You completed 100% of them during the period. It's assumed they were completed during the period because that's what you had left over. Once again, all the beginning units, they've been accounted for. So ending work in process, you can assume that all of those were started, but not yet completed during the period. So for direct materials, you completed 100%. So 100% times 100 is 100. And then you only completed about 60% for conversion. So 60% times 100 is 60 units. So let's go ahead and total these up here, total units. We already know total units to account for was 600 units. We identified that on number one. For materials, equivalent units total is gonna to be three to five units. And then for conversion costs, it's gonna be 165 plus 225 plus 60. So 450 units. Okay. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and take a look here. So what is the cost per equivalent unit? Well, we're going to take our current period costs, whatever we did during the period. And I'll set it up again like this. So we have direct materials here and then conversion costs. So current period costs for direct materials, we said was $20,000. And then for conversion costs, we said it was 17,500. So we're gonna divide that using that symbol there by our equivalent units. For materials, we said it was 325 units. For conversion, it was 450 units. So our cost per equivalent unit, divide those out, 20,000 divided by 325. It's going to be $61.54 for conversion costs, 17,500 divided by 450. $38.89. So that's it. That's how you get cost per equivalent unit. It's a lot of steps, I know. <laughs> a lot of steps. So 
what I suggest is just go back through this video, review everything, take as much time as you need. Uh, it's really important to absorb this concept. Just take it in bite-sized steps. Once again, thanks for listening today. Uh, my name is Nathan. I'm a Czech tutor. Here's my little link. Go there if you need some homework help, one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring, exam prep. Just send me a message and I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for listening today and I'll see you in the next video.